Yes, so uh, my name is Pablo Gonzalez. I'm originally from Costa Rica and I live in Ireland. I've been in the Salesforce space for what, 14, 15 years. I started as a Salesforce admin, then a consultant, developer, architect. And for the last three years, I've been focused on the Salesforce DevOps uh, product area. Yeah, so at Auto Rabbit, I am a product manager for our uh, new product, uh, which relates to Salesforce security. So the, the role is just a product manager role. Um, basically, I lead the vision for the product that we want to create. I talk to a lot of customers. I do a lot of research trying to understand uh, the Salesforce space in terms of uh, the security gaps that may be there in, in, in the Salesforce ecosystem. And I bring those to the development team to see how we can make them a reality and get those built as product features for our customers. So it's a very different role from what you know traditionally you would see in the Salesforce ecosystem, where most people are admins and developers and architects, just like I was. Um, but I'm very happy doing something a bit adjacent to you know to the traditional uh, Salesforce roles. Yeah, it's funny because I, I, it was not uh, on purpose. So I, about four years ago, I wrote a very simple application called Happy Soup that at the time became very popular in the Salesforce ecosystem. And that led to a startup um, contacting me, a company called Salto. And they wanted uh, to hire someone that had expertise creating Salesforce apps, similar to the one that I had created. And I said, yes. And after maybe four months or six, they pivoted more to like Salesforce DevOps. And at the time I didn't know anything about DevOps. I just knew a little bit, uh, but I had to learn. So I bought a Salesforce book from a friend of mine. Uh, the book is called Master in Salesforce DevOps. I read the whole thing and we just worked through it uh, at Salto trying to figure out, okay, how do we bring uh, modern Salesforce DevOps to, to Salesforce teams? So I did that for a couple of years and then I moved to AutoRabbit, which is also a Salesforce DevOps vendor. And since then I just been, that's all I do now. Like I hardly ever spend time in other areas of Salesforce. Almost everything I do relates to a little bit of Apex, but mostly uh, deployments, DevOps, CICD and all that. So it was purely accidental. It was, it was not on purpose. The lowest point of my Salesforce career was probably when I worked at a consultancy. Um, not that there's anything wrong with consultancies or anything like that, but for me, it just wasn't the right place to be. And I kind of felt lost that I didn't really know what I was doing. I felt that it was funny because for, for many years I wanted to be a consultant. And then when I got there, I felt that it wasn't for me. And it wasn't, it was, it was not obvious to know, is it me? Or is it the, the industry or is it the company, you know, that maybe we don't align. And so for like a whole year, I was pretty, pretty much going through the motions uh, on that job. And I didn't really enjoy it. And I didn't really understand how, how do I get out of here? Maybe this is how everyone else is doing it. Um, and so that was also, that was, was pretty low for me just because I, I really didn't know what to do um, anymore. And luckily, I was able to get out of there and, and I learned that it was just, I'm not a person that, that really enjoys consulting. Uh, I enjoy working with customers in a kind of more in-depth relationship. And the other part would be obviously when COVID hit, right? I think we all suffered a lot during COVID and I also found myself in a job that I really did enjoy and I was stuck at home for, for a long time. Um, and that was also very hard as well. But um, the good thing is that there's so much you can do in the Salesforce space. Like there's just so many opportunities. Like, you know, if, if you don't want to be in consulting, you can always go to like a in-house role or be something else. Like in my case, a product manager. So I naturally feel very fortunate that I had options to kind of, you know, okay, if I don't like this or if I don't feel good here, I can go do something else. Yes, the new book. Um, so it took one year and a bit more to write. 
Um, so I, I always knew I wanted to write a book. I didn't know about what, but I always known that okay, I wanna, at some point in my career, I wanted to write a book. And this is actually the third attempt at writing a book and, and the only successful attempt. Uh, I tried to write a book during COVID as a way to kind of pass time, but uh, just my heart wasn't in it. And the topic was very complicated to write about. Then um, I wanted to write a book about Salesforce DevOps, um, but the problem is the Salesforce DevOps space moved so fast that I thought that the moment the book would be published, it would already be outdated. Um, and so I just I felt like I was just going against um, the wind. And so I pretty much stopped thinking about it until um, again about a year ago, a publisher contacted me uh, just asking if I had any topics that I wanted to write a book about because they had seen my content online and they liked it. And I thought, well, you know what? There's actually not a book about how to write uh, good Apex code. And one thing that I've learned in my Salesforce DevOps career is that you cannot practice DevOps and have poor uh, code quality. There is, there is not optional. If you want to do uh, DevOps the right way, your code quality has to be very good. And so I thought, okay, well, if I can't write about DevOps, at least I can write a good book on how to um, practice good quality in your programming skills. And so that's how the idea was born. And uh, yeah, it was very tough uh, because I'm, um, well, I have a full-time job. I, ha I have a, a baby at home. And so I only had like 45 minutes uh, at night uh, and on weekends uh, to write the book. Luckily, I had around 10 to 13 uh, contributors who helped me. So they would review some chapters, give me feedback. And so it, it wasn't a solo journey. Um, and so I was very lucky. But yes, it's finally out uh, and I'm very excited. I, I was supposed to have it here. Unfortunately, the package arrives today at home and I'm not at home right now. So, um, but the, the whole goal was to have it here so I could show it. But anyway, the book is out. Uh, people can get it. And I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, so one um, big change that I've noticed and just very recently is that the Salesforce space and the Salesforce development space is a lot more open to alternatives and public debate about what works and what doesn't work so a good example is i recently launched uh, as a companion to my book i launched the apex well architected framework uh, a few days ago and that is positioned as an alternative to another framework that has existed uh, in the salesforce DevOps space for years and the reaction to that was very very positive even on LinkedIn, you know, which is a public forum. And it was all done very respectfully to the previous framework. But I think a few years ago, if I had come out and publicly say, hey, here's a better way to do things, people would have been a lot more, um, just not, not too sure how to react to that. And I felt that the ecosystem has grown where we have achieved a level of maturity where we can just publicly talk about, you know, some things don't work for use cases. For other use cases, there are better alternatives. And so that's one thing that I've noticed is that, is that we are able to have more mature conversations that just wouldn't be possible uh, a few years ago. And obviously there's the, the rise of AI, which uh, has completely changed how we do development anywhere, not just in Salesforce. And so advice for newcomers is hard and not just in Salesforce, but pretty much anywhere because now AI can do what a junior developer uh, is able to do. And so now we're in this weird transition period where if you're a senior developer, you can use AI to, you know, be, basically be five times yourself. You, you can do a lot of things very, very quickly. But if you're a junior developer and you use AI, then it's basically like a, like a crotch. It's like it can do almost anything you want, even if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't understand what you're doing. And it's very tempting, right? Like, because if I can just write a whole program with one prompt, why wouldn't I do it, right? And... Unfortunately, that temptation is so strong that I, I fear that junior developers or people who are entering the ecosystem are not going to learn proper programming skills or proper software design principles and just go straight to AI development. And while that may be great for a few years, I think in five or 10 years, we're going to notice a huge increase in technical debt. 
that exist in Salesforce orgs because a lot of the code was written without really understanding the, the fundamentals of software design. So my advice to people that are coming to the ecosystem, especially in Salesforce development, is to still take the time to learn programming and software design well. If you do that, AI can make you 10 times better than if you just go straight to AI.